En la 2.4 me dio estoy yo. Uh, hello, how are you, teacher? Me dio guerra la, la, la primera, donde dice, very challenging taking care uh -huh. must be. Mira, el orden me dio guerra, me di duro con esa. Pero al... No, a mí esa de primera me salió y, y ya, la, ya la ordenaste bien. Sí, ya, ya ahorita ya la, ya la tengo bien, pero ah. sí te digo que esa, la primera, no. me dio guerra. Por más que, no. mira, la, a mí la ponía de, de una forma, salió. la ponía de otra y de otra y de otra y nada. Sí, pero al cierto. fin lo logré. Sí, a mí esa era la que me ha parado la cabeza toda la tarde, pero yo solo dos ponía. Pero es eso, tenía, eh, tenía uh -huh. que poner tres. Eran tres, ajá. Hello, teacher. How are you today? No, no, it's here, teacher. No. no. O sea, que están otras dos personas que no son teacher. Hi. Hello, students. <laughs> hi, hi. Hi, hi. <laughs> Are you hi, there? Hi-Fi. The Hi-Fi me acabo de acordar. Good evening, guys. Good evening, teacher. Hi. Welcome to everybody. Osa, how are you today? Good evening. How are you today, Dante? ¿Qué onda? How are you guys? So it's a great that pleasure. Pleasure. Ready to right. start our class? Are you ready? Yes, teacher. <laughs> ready, teacher. Not That's ready, sweet. bro. That's awesome. I'm switching <laughs> my camera. Oh. Not ready. Okay. Not ready. Good evening. Hi. Hay que hacerle. Good evening, Morena. Oh, just. Hay que hacerle frente. Good evening, teacher. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. So let's see what happened here. We're going to start. Also, my, I'm trying to switch my camera here because I work with two cameras, but I'm going to try to change that. So, guys, welcome to all of you to start our English class. It's a great opportunity to, you know, be encouraged after different activities that we have developed in our jobs or different things. And have this class can help us to learn a lot. Feel, you know, blessed because we will learn a lot and also we will practice. This is something that we need to, you know, to do, right? Try to show that we are the best and also we are and doing different interesting things. Okay, so before that, that we start a class, I just want to ask you, what do you remember we started in the last class? Who wants to help me with that? I need a volunteer to tell me what we started in the last class. Yes. Teacher, so. last night we we talked about um, horror moves and clauses with, with it and clauses with when. Excellent. Personality types too. Yeah. Teacher. Oh, Personalities. Sorry. Yes. Personality what else types do? too. Yeah. Perfect. That's that's great. So congratulations. So it's, it's something interesting. We also have had to take like a time to, you know, practice and also improve, you know, our English skills. What I love about these classes is that many of the activities that we develop are speaking. So the program is like pushing you to talk. The program is pushing you to communicate. The program is pushing you to formulate structures, practice, use vocabulary. And this is good because advance is like that. Advance is try to show what we have learned since the very beginning. And also, meanwhile, we are working on these activities. We're getting confidence when speaking because we as English students and non-native speakers, we are sometimes doubt or we have some questions about pronunciation, questions about grammar, but don't worry. We are learning, we are learners. This is not our native language. But besides that one, we have a domain about the language. So feel really proud of you because we are doing a great job, okay? So we will see that the next level, imagine your English level will be fantastic.
I'm pretty sure of that one. So let's start with the activities and also the topic for this class. Look at this one. Um, sorry, one second. It's well. So, did you check the presentation that I sent it to you by by WhatsApp? Did you check the the material? No. Did you check the presentation that I shared with you guys? Yes. Yes, teacher. Thanks okay. for that information. Yes, teacher. Exactly. Thank you so much. Yes, I, I will share it with you right now this one. It's because I'm changing here the, the volume. It was like a little low, so I need to, you know, to do it in this way. Okay. So what's the topic for this class? Yes. What's the topic? What's the topic? Can you see it? Yes. 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 Oh, yes, exactly. So this is the topic that we will develop today. There are different things that we will uh, talk about. And also, especially talking about uh, gerund phrases, right? Gerund phrases are very necessary. Okay, so let's see here. And also, we will talk about different things. And we have the gerund phrases. Look at this one. And I need a volunteer from the class that can help me to, one second, uh, to read the information about gerund phrases as subjects. Okay, who wants to help me to read this part? Gerund phrases as subjects. Who wants to help me to read? Hi. Me, teacher. Okay, uh, Santiago, mm -hmm. thank you. Gerund phrases are subjects. Gerund phrases. Gerund phrases are subjects. Designing clothes is not a main job. Being a flight attendant sounds exciting. Writing a gossip column could be fun. Directing a TV show will be interesting. That's it. That's right. Okay, the German phrases of subjects are like, for example, Designing clothes, it's not a man's job. So the word designing clothes becomes a gerund phrase. Most mm -hmm. of the time when we are talking about uh, phrases and we are using them as the main subject. For example, I say, um, the car is a beautiful tool for transportation. The car is the subject. In this case, the gerund phrase is as a subject because it's like we're talking about something specifically in a sentence. For example, designing clothes is the subject. And then we have the verb is, and then not, and a man's job is the complement. Subject and predicate. Subject designing clothes is not a man's job, is the predicate. Is is the verb. Being a flight attendant is the subject. Sounds is the verb. Exciting is the complement. Writing a gossip column is the subject. Could be is the verb, predicate, and fun is the complement. So we use the, the gerund phrases as a subject in a sentence. And in that case, the characteristic about gerunds, of course, is that we use the verb and we add ing. Design, designing, v, wind, write, writing, directing, direct plus ing form, directing. So in that case, the gerund phrases are used as a subject. So the in that case, the subject is this structure and can, can be combined with the verb plus ing and a noun. Okay, so look at this one. 
Now I need a volunteer to help me to read gerund phrases as objects. Who wants to do it? Who wants to help me to read? Me, teacher. Thank you. All okay. Right. Okay, sorry, let me see. Oish. Okay. He wouldn't like being a fashion designer. He enjoy being a flight attendant. She'll be good at writing a gossip column. They love directing a TV show. Okay, in that case, um, we can see that most of the time, the subject goes at the beginning of the sentence. And also the gerund phrase goes at the beginning of the sentence. And in this case, we use the gerund phrases as objects. So that means that the principal subject is not the gerund phrases because this goes at the end of the sentence. In that case, we can see the example. He wouldn't like being a fashion designer. And he wouldn't like is, in this case, he, the subject, wouldn't like the verb. Being a fashion designer is the object of the sentence because he is the main subject and wouldn't, wouldn't like is the verb, the main verb. So it will say, he wouldn't like uh, being a fashion designer. That will say in Spanish, él no le gustaría ser un diseñador de modas. Entonces, like to, uh, like being a fashion designer se convierte como el objeto de la oración. No quien ejecuta la acción, sino de a quien, quien recibe la acción. Y quien recibe la acción es like being a fashion designer. He'll enjoy being a flight attendant. He is the subject. Would is plus enjoy is the main verb. And being a flight attendant is the complement. So we could say in Spanish, él disfrutaría ser un sobrecargo. That's the example here. Look at the next sentence. Look at the next sentence. She, she'll be good at writing a gossip column. She'll be good at writing a gossip column. We'll say in Spanish, she is the subject. Would be is the main verb. Good at writing a gossip column is the complement. So we will say in Spanish, a ella, ella sería muy buena en escribir eh, chismes, en una columna de chismes o columna de noticias, en este caso. Ya que gossip para nosotros es como chismes o chambres. O alguna información relevante de personas, right? And also we have the next one. Dave love directing a TV show. Dale love directing a TV show. They is the subject. Would love is the main verb. Directing a TV show is the complement. So what we'll say in Spanish, a ellos les encantaría dirigir un show de televisión, un programa de televisión. So we can see the difference between the gerund phrases and subjects. En este caso, pues, cuando hablamos de gerund phrases como un subject, entonces la frase va al inicio. ¿Y por qué está en negrito? Porque es el sujeto. ¿Ya? En cambio, cuando usamos eh, el gerund phrase como un objeto, este ya no pasa a ser el sujeto, sino que necesitamos un sujeto. Por eso están los pronombres. He, she, they. Para luego al final agregar la frase como un objeto de la oración. Recuerda que el sujeto es el que ejecuta la acción y el objeto es en quién sobrecae la acción. Por ejemplo, yo digo que yo compro, dice, Santiago compró un Lamborghini murciélago, un carro de lujo. Entonces, Santiago es el sujeto. ¿Y cuál es el objeto? Es el, el carro, Lamborghini murciélago. 
Entonces no se habla de Santiago, sino del carro. Cuando vean a Santiago en el carro, ¿de quién van a hablar? ¿De Santiago o del carro? Del carro. <risa> no sabremos, que, no sabemos, pero bueno. Entonces el objeto es a, a, a quien sobrecae la acción, right? Y en este caso la única diferencia es que aquí ya el, el objeto y el sujeto son unas frases, que es un verbo más el complemento. Entonces, como, como, no es un, como no es un verbo, sino que se le llama gerund phrase, por ejemplo, cuando yo digo designing clothes, significa diseñar ropa no es un trabajo de hombres. ¿Qué opinan? ¿Están de acuerdo en eso? Teacher, I have a question. I don't know. Tell About me. This. No. No. Okay. Teacher, then agree. I'm listening. Okay. I need... Uh... Um, is that, that what kind of object is? Eh, en este caso, eh, podría ser un objeto directo. Could ah, be a okay. direct object. Direct object, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. ya que sabemos que hay objeto directo y objeto indirecto. Pero en este caso, como es una gerund phrase, la oración va generalizada. Porque ya el objeto no es algo específico, sino que es una frase. Por eso se le llama German phrase, porque va en función de una frase. Si vemos en oración, decimos designing clothes, sería diseñar ropa como sujeto. Being a flight attendant, ser un aeromoso o aeromosa, es el sujeto. Writing a gossip column, es decir, escribir una columna de noticias, es el sujeto. Directing a TV show, es también el sujeto. Entonces, eh, como sabemos, este es el objeto directamente que va relacionado a la oración. Right? That is the, like the main point of this. What we la have to do... Yes? Perdón, perdón, teacher. La Tell diferencia me. es que uno va al principio y el otro va al final. Sí, y la diferencia es que en la oración no solo va al principio, sino que dentro de esa oración no hay otro sujeto, no hay sino otro que sujeto. ese gerund phrase es el, es el, el principal, es Bien el ahí. sujeto, el que va a conjugar la demás, las demás acciones. En cambio, cuando va gerund phrases, ustedes se fijan que hay un sujeto, que en este caso es he, she, sí. it. Entonces, sí. automáticamente el gerund phrase se convierte en el objeto, es de quién se va a hablar en la oración. Porque ya el sujeto está ejecutando la acción. Esa es la diferencia del gerund phrase as object and the gerund phrase as object. Mm -hmm. Because you can talk about the, the gerund phrase like dancing is, is good, dancing is... It's about like something like this, I think. Yeah, in that case, uh, this becomes the subject. Ese se convierte en el sujeto. For example, si yo le digo, exercising every day is good for your health. Exercising is good. En este caso, ejercitarse es bueno para la salud. Entonces, ejercitarse se convierte en el germ. Ejercitarse todos los días, por ejemplo, sería un sujeto. Porque no hay nadie más, sino la acción de hacer ejercicios. Entonces decimos, exercising every day is good for your health. Sujeto, verbo, complemento. Eating healthy is necessary for our life. Entonces ese eating healthy, comer saludable, se convierte en el sujeto. Porque no hay nadie más. Esa acción está haciendo, este sujeto se ejecuta la acción. En este caso se convierte en una frase. Esa frase se convierte en el sujeto. That's like the way of this. En cambio, en la otra parte ya no, porque ya es distinto. Ya este, hay un sujeto quien ejecuta la acción y esta frase, esta gerund phrase, se convierte como el objeto de la oración. Let's see the examples about the part eight. Look at the gerund phrases in column A and write your opinion of each job by choosing information from the column B. And C, then add two more gerund phrases and write similar sentence. Working as an architect. ¿Qué sería working as an architect? Gerund phrase or uh, as subject or gerund phrase as object? 
Gerald Phrase Object. 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 Exacto, porque no hay nada más que ejecute la acción, sino que el, el Gerald Phrase el first, el como, hace la función del sujeto. Right. ¿Y cuál es el verbo? Uh, working. Mm, work. No, porque is. working es, es, ah, es, no, no, el, no, no. es un gerundio. Is. To be is. 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 Ajá, is es is. el is. exacto. Is es el, el verbo. verbo. Entonces, eh, ¿a dónde comienza el, el predicado, por ejemplo? In this. Desde el verbo. Entonces, eh, significa que antes del It's verbo awful. tiene que ir el sujeto en la oración. It's sujeto, awful. verbo y complemento. La división. Entonces, igual en inglés no cambia. So, working as an architect es el sujeto. Is es el verbo que, donde comienza el predicado. Y awful, ¿qué sería? El complemento, the complement. Entonces, working as a notch architect is awful. Bueno, no estoy de acuerdo en esa oración, pero así la han puesto. ¿Qué opinan ustedes? It's not mm, really. I agree. <laughs> yeah, because architect is, is a good job, definitely. It's, it's, it's a profession, right? So I don't think. But that is the style. Okay, the second sentence. Taking care of children... Seems scary. ¿En qué función tiene taking care of children? Subject. Yeah, one phrase. Subject. Uh, as, a, as a subject, right? It seems, ¿qué sería? It's a verb. A verb. And what is the meaning about seems in Spanish? Parece ser. Parece. Parece, right? Exactly. And the complement would be scary. So... Imagine, it's a very challenging sentence because the Spanish will be like, cuidar, cuidar de niños parece aterrador. ¿Qué opinan ustedes? Yes. It's possible. It's possible. Imagínense con uno o dos hijos, ya no aguanto estos niños. Que no sé qué. It's the age of children. Yeah. Imagine like <laughs> six, seven, eight years y tener un grupo como de 20 niños ahí en su casa. <laughs> yeah, you have to be patient and also you have to be very patient. And no es no around. es aterra no es aterrador porque trabajar con niños eh, lo que se requiere es paciencia. Eh, es si trabaja es con niños es porque tiene una vocación. Es, es benito. Yo trabajo hasta con 60 niños. Yeah. Dando tiene una clases. vocación. Es porque no es para cualquiera, es una vocación. No es People... fácil, no, no es fácil porque incluso con gente cuesta trabajar con más de 10, 20 personas porque diferentes caracteres no digamos con niños. Yes, y hay, que, y hay que estar al 100, con ellos hay que sí. estar al 100, motivación. Sí. No va a estar con 20% y no se le duerme. <ríe> so you have to be active. Yes. O hacen desastre, o hacen desastre porque <ríe> eso es lo más posible. <laughs> yeah, so it, there is a balance. There is a balance. But it, yeah, if you work with kids uh, as a teacher or as a trainer or as a coach, it's a passion. It's not for everybody. It's a passion. Tiene que tener una vocación. Si no tiene la vocación, le va a ser muy difícil. But you can work. Yes. Es como trabajar con personas. You work with adults. Tengo alrededor de 17 años de trabajar con personas adultas y pues es de tener bastante, es una vocación realmente, no, no para cualquiera. Igual para explicar también, porque hay personas que son muy buenas, pero dicen, es que yo no puedo explicar, hasta yo me trago, dicen. People say that. <laughs> so that would be challenging. Ok, teacher, so... ha trabajado con niños, Ticha? Um, like two years, I guess so. Como un par de años por ahí, quizás unos dos, tres años, creo. Dos años, por decirlo así. Yeah, and I like it. I, I know I not about kids, how to deal with kids is, is good. I, I know, I can do it. Okay, number number three, winning the lottery sounds fantastic. Yes. Obviously, it yeah. is good, right? Do you, do you buy tickets for the lottery? Or you don't? To. Never. Never. Oh, it's the subject, right? So winning the lottery is the subject and sounds fantastic. Exactly. Entonces, eso se convierte en el sujeto. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, there's a possibility. Definitely. So if you can try, 
Hay gente que dice, no, es que yo no me gano nada. Y ni compra los tickets. Porque nunca me gano. Esos tipos se vendieron buy tickets. Otros que dicen, cuando me gane la lotería y ni siquiera compran un pedazo. Yeah, <laughs> lo <that's> right. right. <laughs> And there are some people that say, I always participate in some raffles. Eh, participo en algunas rifas y nunca me he ganado nada. Okay, well. <laughs> some people say that. It's a surprise. Okay, number four, conducting an orchestra. Um, it must be fascinating. Conducting an orchestra. Look at this. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. yeah, that would be great. So, conducting the orchestra would yes, be the, yes. the subject, right? And must be the verb and fascinating the compliment. Working uh, on a movie the set. Subjects. Yes, subjects. that's correct. And all of them are, are, in that case, the subjects, like making a living as an artist. The pronunciation is artist. Don't say artist, it's artist. Um would be kind of boring or really rewarding or very challenging depending on the, the personal perspective. Ya que no todas las personas ven las cosas de la misma manera, right? Some people like them teams, some people that they don't like, so there are different opinions. And retiring at age 40 would be what? Well, we don't know in El Salvador. We, we don't know what is retiring at the age of 40, right? Uh, so be boring. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, here in, in El Salvador, nobody retires at the age of 40 in a job. Possible, teacher. It's possible? It's possible. No, it's impossible. No. Yeah, right. Alguien que diga de este grupo, no, yo quizás a la edad de los 40 me voy a retirar ya de trabajo. <laughs> In the army, pretty difficult. Are retiring a uh, fifty years old. Ah, okay, they have the freedom to retire. Okay, that makes sense to me. <laughs> And also because of the economy, the inflation in the U.S. So it will be a little bit challenging. <laughs> so, but it's a challenge to retire at, at the age of forty. Ya trabajé mucho, dice. People say that. Okay, let's continue. Well, before that we go on to the next slide, I just want to ask you, do you have any questions or doubt? No questions? No questions, teacher. Okay. No questions, teacher. No, thank you. So far, so good, teacher. Okay, perfect. Music to my ears. Okay, look at this one. Look at these pictures. Working as an architect would be really rewarding. Working as an architect would be really rewarding. Trabajar como un arquitecto eh, sería realmente enriquecedor. Um, per words, give reasons for your opinion about the jobs in per aid. In that case, we did that one, right? We socialize about that one. So in that case... That would be interesting. But I want you to go on in the part, letter C, where it says group work. Complete the sentences with the German phrases. Then take turns for your sentences and share the three most interesting sentences with your class. There are six statements. What you had to do is you had to complete the sentences according to any personal idea you have. For example, number one, I think I'd be good at what? Yo creo que sería bueno en que teach English, no math, exercising, painting, drawing. Think about one ability or something that you would be good. Yo creo que yo sería bueno en, en que, what? Think about it. Maybe play a Real Madrid soccer. in Barcelona. <laughs> what do you think? Yes? Playing soccer. Oh, you will be good at playing soccer. At playing soccer. Okay. At singing in a concert or yes. acting in a movie. At, I think it's a good at a painting. At a painting or a good cooking. I will be good at cooking. I think I'd be good at... Uh, software programming. 
Ah, okay. Uh, programming softwares. Okay, that that's that's okay. I I think that I would be good at hosting in an event or a ceremony. What else? I'm now seeing. Okay. I I think I would be good at um acting in a in a famous series. What other ideas can you give me about it? Yes. I think I would I would be good at a bike competition maybe. Okay. Um you there is one that is down there that says I think I'd be good at figuring out problems. Uh, or I would be good at solving problems. Creo que sería bueno eh, en resolver problemas. That, that is another possible example here. What else we can talk about, guys? Number two, I wouldn't be very good at. This is the opposite. So mm -hmm. it's totally opposite. In my case, I will confess, I wouldn't be very good at drawing. I am a disaster drawing. I'm not good. I wouldn't be very good at cooking. I'm not so good at cooking too. I need to learn. Okay, continue. Number two, give me more I, ideas. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be very good at medical career ah, or okay. medicine career. Yes. Me too. I will be very good at medical. I will be very good at pilot. Ah, as flying, flying as a, as a pilot. Okay. I will be very good at singing. Ah, okay. Karaoke. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay. I wouldn't be be very good at babysitting. Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, neither go. I, yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be so good <laughs> babysitting. It's complicated <laughs> what else i wouldn't be very good as a as a dj in in a disco <laughs> yeah in a disco or in a party yeah i i go be I very good at, at nurse okay uh, nurse, um, you say I wouldn't, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't. wouldn't be, I wouldn't be very good at dancing. Ah, yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, I, so, so. I wouldn't be very good at going to the gym. Oh, exercising at the gym. Hey, it's necessary. Go to the gym, it's healthy. No yeah. way. Power miss. I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be very good at uh, having diet because I eat whatever. My sweet bread, the pan dulce with coffee is, I mean, I can, I cannot. Stop. I wouldn't be very good at forensic. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that, that it would be challenging. Okay, number three. I'd be interested in, this is something that you would like to learn or something that you would like to do. I'd be, I'd be interested in parachuting. Um, estaría interesado en paracaidismo, por ejemplo. It's something that you would like to do. Algo que le gustaría hacer. Yo estaría interesado en... I'd be very interested in learning English, for example. What else? I'd be interested in learning Russian. Roshan, okay. Yeah, Roshan. Nice language. I'd be I'd, interested yes. in 
play the guitar. Ah, guitar. okay. Yeah. I I I I be interested in playing the piano. Mm -hmm. It's good. <laughs> yeah. What else, I'm students? Interested in competition, swimming. Oh yeah, yeah. That, that that's interesting. I like it. I be interested in a pilot. Okay. I be interested in travel. Traveling and Rotten. Okay. Traveling is well. Traveling. Okay. Let's see the next one. Uh, number four. I'll get tired of. Yo me cansaría de. De qué? I get tired of working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I get tired of driving too many hours. There's mm -hmm. another one. I get tired of driving many hours. What else? Yes. I I get tired of not to see my family for a long time. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? I I get tired of not to see my family for a long time. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that is a nice sentence. What else? I get tired of swimming in the ocean. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. I get tired of uh, living in another country. Uh huh. Okay. I get tired of running for, for two hours. Okay. I get tired of living on the San Miguel. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's, it's, my, it's much hot. It must hot. It's hot. Yeah, it, it's hot. Okay, next. Um, I'm very excited by... I'm very excited by watching an interesting movie. Okay, yeah, that that's cool. That's cool. Oh, in that case, is will be like, estoy muy emocionado por ver una película. I'm very excited for. Estoy muy emocionado por. I'm very excited by um, flying to Canada, for example. What else? you can, you know, include. I'm very excited by camping in the mountain. Yes, camping in the mountain. Yes. Yeah, that's right. What else? I'm very um, excited by riding a mo motorcycle. Okay. Teacher, me, I'm yes. very excited by dancing all day and DJing. Ah, nice, nice. Yes. What else? I'm very excited by meeting my old classmates from oh. my yes, from my school. Eh, sorry. Okay. From my high school. Yes. All right. That's great. That's great. Excellent. Okay, in the last one, I'll enjoy, I'll enjoy. I enjoy meet new place. Okay. All right. 
What else? Es como decir, yo disfrutaría. I enjoy traveling to other countries. I enjoy eating my favorite food. Okay. Nice. Okay, well, let's continue with the next part of the class. And also, we have the suffixes. And when we talk about suffixes, the suffixes are structures that can be added to a root word. The goal about a suffix in a root word is to create new vocabulary. In that case, there are some special suffixes that we can add to the root word to create new words. In that case, for example, we have E-R, O-R, I-S-T, and I-A-N. Those are called suffixes because when we add them to an, a new word, we create a new word. So that is what we call in that case. In este caso, los suffixes son estructuras que se agregan a una palabra principal para crear nuevas palabras. Por ejemplo, yo digo la palabra eh, politic. ¿Qué significa politic? Político. Ajá. Político. Eh, político. De política, right? Política. Política. Y si yo le agrego, por ejemplo, I A N, digo politician. Entonces ya politician significa político para referirse a una persona. Entonces la palabra politic le agregué I A N y automáticamente me creó una nueva palabra. Esas palabras que se agregan al final se le llaman sufix. Los famosos sufixes o los sufijos y los prefijos. Es lo mismo que en español. Es lo mismo. En este caso, pues vemos ahí el ejemplo de los sufixes y los prefixes. Entonces, eh, vamos a agregar los sufixes er, or, ist, or ian to form the name of these jobs. Write the words in the chart and add one more example to each column. Tenemos aerobics, instruct, y comedy, comedy. Entonces, ahí pues vemos algunas palabras, por ejemplo, counselor, gossip columnist, Politician, psychiatrist, TV reporter, web designers. Vemos ahí cómo eh, están los ejemplos. Pero yo quiero que ustedes agreguen unas nuevas palabras. Una palabra que tenga que llevar ER. ¿Qué podría ser? Por ejemplo, el verbo vender. ¿Cómo se dice vender en inglés? Sell. So. Y si yo so. le agrego una ER, ¿qué va a significar? Vendedor. Ajá, Vendedor. seller. Entonces, yo le agregué ER y automáticamente me creó una nueva palabra, que en este caso es vendedor. Ahora, quiero que piensen en otras palabras que le puedan agregar ER o R, I, E, S, T, I, I, A, N, like politician, psychologist. Consul. Hola. Consul. Consul. Consular. Consular, ajá. Como un tipo consejero. Consular, consular. Entonces tenemos a... Teach, teacher. Ah, teach, ajá, teacher. Entonces les voy a dar unos minutitos para que piensen en aquellas palabras que podemos utilizar. ¿Ok? Y luego las socializamos. Let's go.
Okay, guys, give me a second. I, I'm going to to check and also take advantage of our time to, to pass the attendance list. So let's see here. Just give me one moment. Meanwhile, you write some other examples that we can use as part of the, the suffixes because thanks to the suffixes, we can create new vocabulary, new words, and also we use them all the time. So we also can use suffixes and prefixes. And both are really important to create new vocabulary. Let's see, one second. So it's it's important to you know to to use these um, suffixes, especially when writing new words, vocabulary, and also the recommendation is what can I do to learn a more vocabulary? Reading a book can can be very helpful because in a book you can find new words, new vocabulary, new expressions. So it's very recommendable to use that. I always have said that it's necessary to, you know, to read a book in English because we can get new words, new vocabulary, and also we can expand our English knowledge. So let's see here. And um, this is good. When you have vocabulary, it's easy for you to speak in English to communicate. Okay, let's see here. Uh, Brigitte Lisette Eraso. Present teacher. Thanks. Uh, Carmen Guadalupe Escamilla. Present teacher. Thanks. Uh, Cesar Alexander Ramirez. Present teacher. Thanks. Uh, Dina Elizabeth Flores. Present teacher. Thanks. Edith Araceli Guzmán. Edith. Eduardo Alexander Díaz. Present teacher. Thanks. Uh, Elvis Aníbal Rauda. Elvis? Present teacher. Oh, okay. Um, Emerson Alexander Mejia. Emerson? Emerson? No. Eneida Jamilet Gonzalez. Present teacher. Thank you. Uh, Jaime Roberto Aldana. Present. Javier Ernesto Lucero. Present. Eh, Karen Suleima Ciseña. Present. Ok. Eh, let's see. Laura Michelle Arce. Present teacher. Thanks. Eh, Maria Catalina Corea. Present teacher. Eh, Marvin Fernando Marcel. Present teacher. Thanks. Eh, Morena Guadalupe Fuentes. Present teacher. Thanks. Eh, Oscar Alberto Rodríguez. Present teacher. Eh, Raquel Arely Santos. Present teacher. Santiago Antonio Chávez. Present teacher. Eh, Sara Nalda Guzmán. Present teacher. Thanks. Okay, all of you here. Okay, are you ready? Okay, for example, can you tell me some words that we can use with ER, adding the suffix ER? What examples do you have about ER? Teach, teacher. Yes. Farmer. Painter. Pa farmer, painter. Singer. Singer. Baker. Baker, plumber, employer. Ah, okay. And driver, tiger. Mm, tiger. Mm, in that case, it doesn't match because it's like gardener. A gardener, okay. Toaster. Contractor. Construction. Trainer. Okay. Be wider. Tender. Okay, great. Employer. Cooler. Employer. Cooler. Cooler. Designer. Designer, yes. The climber. Worker. Yes, that's right. Worker. Manager. 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 Right. Manage. 
Okay, what about OR? What words do you have about OR? Collector. Collector. Mayor. A major. Outer. Oh, okay. Outer. Instructor. Instructor. Professor. Professor. Fighter. Animator. Animator. The animator. Instructor. Instruct. Instructor. Yes. Actor. What? An actor. An actor. actor. Yes. Act and or actor. Yes. Okay. What about e uh, e s t? I s t. Dentist. Dentist. Yes. Artist. Okay. Artist. Artist. Extremist. Extremist. Scientist. Okay. Finalist. Finalist. Cosmetologist. Okay. Psychologist. Yes. Psychologist. Yes. Journalist. Journalist. Yeah, that's right. Economist. Economist. Scientist. Biologist. Biologist. Mm -hmm. What about I N I A N? Ian. Musician. Electrician. Electrician. Musician. 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 What else? Technician. A technician. Technician. Okay, technician. Musician. Musician. Yes. That's correct. Okay, just to part conclude part of the class, I just want to ask you, um, talk about unusual career you would like to have and what jobs, I mean, are not so common you would like to have. Think about some jobs that you say, you know what, this job is not so common to me, but I would like to be. And I'm going to confess, I would like to be a park ranger. Are people who work, for example, in some specific uh, sanctuaries where you can find a lot of animals, like a park ranger. In the U.S., there are many um, like sacred places or protected places for animals. Park ranger. I would like to be one of them que son como lugares como santuarios de animales. For example, there are some people who protect, you know, these places in the U.S. So I would like to be a park ranger. What else would you like to be? What would you like to be? Uh, a different job that you say, you know what? I would like to be a flight attendant because I will fly in airplanes where, or a pilot. I don't know. Think about it. Oh, I would like to be the president of, of El Salvador. I don't know. <laughs> An usual job. I would like to be a psychologist. A psychologist? A psychologist. Ah, okay. I would like to be a singer. Ah, okay. A singer. Ooh. Nice. I would like to be a cook. Because every day I I will uh, cook my my favorite uh, kind of food. Yes. A special dishes. Okay. <laughs> yes, ever. Nice, nice. What else? I would like to be a field director. Field director. Ah, film director. Okay. What else? I I would like to be a professional surfist or surfer surfer. Ah, okay. As a surfist, okay. Yeah, that would be great. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, the last one. The last one.
uh, would you like to be an um, archaeologist? Mm, okay, that's, that's great. Archaeologist. Okay, students. Well, thank you so much for staying here in the class today. I really appreciate the participation of all of you in the class. Don't forget to practice English. If you have some time, listen to music or watch TV in English because that can help you to work the listening skills and also learning vocabulary. So thanks a lot for the practice. Remember that we can like practice like this one. Tomorrow we will continue. Well, actually, I'm sorry. In that case, we will continue working with some other activities. And I hope to see you the next class. Remember that we have class uh, from Monday to Thursdays in that case. And also, and also we have done a great job. I don't know if you have any questions or doubt before we conclude the class today. No, teacher. Thanks for the no, information. Thank you, teacher. No, no thanks. Is that okay? Thank so, guys, as part of my, my recommendations, well, uh, do your best, practice English, and also do a great job. So I hope to see you in the next Monday, okay? Okay. Right. okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay. Good. Good night. Bye. Bye. Good night. Thank you.